This is a meeting of the uh, of the Allendale Land Use Board, a regular meeting at which formal action will be taken on items listed on the agenda and upon any other matters which may properly come before the Land Use Board. The requirements of the Open Public Meetings Act have been satisfied through posting on the public bulletin board in a municipal building and on the borough website and by publication in the record on January 28, 2023, with copies being sent to the Ridgewood News. Certain agenda items will be open to the public for comment and or testimony. The board will advise the public when such matters are open for comment and or testimony. Okay. Um, before we get into a roll call, if you guys could join me, let's salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with Okay, Linda, can we have a roll call, please? Vice Chair Bergen. Here. Board Member Here. Board Member Kistner. Here. Board Member Dallow. Here. Mayor Sirico. Here. Mayor Sirico. Here. President Lozano. Here. Okay. Uh, next on our agenda are approval of the minutes. I'm getting, I have to get better at making sure I'm using a little faster, but I thank everybody on the board for whatever comments and changes. Um, does anybody have any comments on these at all other than what's been done? Okay, then I would like please a motion for approval of the minutes for both the 18th and the 20th, 2023 of the regular meetings of the Land Use Board, please. I'll make a motion. Thank you. Just me. Thank you. Vice Chairwoman Bergen? Yes. Board Member Petrino? Yes. Board Member Kirsten? Yes. Board Member Dallow? Yes. Karen Sirico? Yes. Mayor Wisinski? Here. Yes. Open it, Roselle. Yes. Okay. Next on our agenda, we have four resolutions that we need to go through the approval on. Um, I reviewed them. I don't see anything on all four of them, but we're going to take them one by one. Chris, okay. I'm going to ask you, please, if you wouldn't mind. Sure. to uh, synopses all four of them in order. Okay, Thanks, very sir. good. So resolution 2318 involved the applicant Allendale Senior Housing Corp. This was the uh, preliminary and final site plan approval for the addition of two uh, buildings on the Seaback Court site, uh, senior restricted, restricted senior housing, and uh, with the addition of four units, so from 16 units to 20 units total within that specific zone. That was approved, and the resolution is attached to your file here. Okay. So I'm going to go through the poll in a row. Oh, I guess we should do them one, one at a time. Yeah, All right, we'll do them one at a time. Okay. Um, can I have a motion, please, for our resolution 23-18? So moved, Kistner. Thank you. Um, Second. Present for that hearing. Oh. I'll make a motion. Okay. And a second, please. Second. Thank you. Okay. Vice Chairwoman Bergen? Yes. Board Member Petrino? Yes. Chairman Sirico? Yes. Open it both down. Yes. Okay. Resolution passes. Resolution right. 2319 is the Barry Poskanzer application, but it was, as we recall, a minor subdivision, uh, which is really just a reallotment of a lot line between two properties, both owned by Mr. Poskanzer, that was approved, and the resolution is there attached to your file. Okay. Um, that one I know we had to, we had just the setback. That was the only thing came mind. I know that's all covered in there. Yes. Good. Okay. Uh, may I have a motion, please, to uh, to approve resolution twenty three dash nineteen? I moved. Thank you. Second. <clears throat> I'll second. Thank you. Vice Chairman Bergen? Yes. Board Member Petrino? Yes. Board Member Dallow? Yes. Chairman Sirico? Yes. Mayor Wisinski? Yes. Open it, Roselle? Yes. Okay. All right, moving on. Resolution 23 20. Uh, resolution 23-20 was the uh, Giuseppe and Alexandra DePinto application at 20 Stone Fence Road. 
they were doing a renovation and uh, uh, addition in the double A zone, and uh, they needed a side yard setback relief, which was granted by this board. And uh, the resolution is attached with all the usual conditions that we have applied to them. All right, thank you. Uh, any questions on it? If not, can I have a motion, please, for approval? I'll make a motion. Thank you. Second. Second. Thank you. John. Vice Chairwoman Bergen. Yes. Board Member Katrina. Yes. Board Member Gallo. Yes. Chairman Sirica. Yes. Mayor Wisniewski. Yes. Open up those out. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. And the last one, 23-21, please. All right, 23-21 was uh, Russell and Lisa Young, 101 East Orchard Street. They came in with the application in the AA zone, really a, a complete renovation uh, on the present foundation and also to expand the footprint and raise the height of the structure that was presently in place. Uh, they needed, uh, they had some pre-existing non-conforming conditions such as minimum lot area and minimum lot width, and uh, also needed a side yard setback variances, which were granted. And uh, this was a C1 variance that was approved at the last meeting. Okay, thank you. Any questions on the resolution? Okay, if not, can I have a motion for approval? I'll make a motion. Thank you. Second? Um, oh, sorry. I'll make a motion. I won't make a motion. Thank you, sir. Can I have a second? I was here. I'm going to see you. Second. Thank you. Board Member Katrina? Yes. Board Member Kistner? Yes. Chairman Sarita? Yes. Open up both ballots? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So the next part of our agenda is public hearings. We have two on here, of which one um, I will read it just into the record. Application file LUB 20-2023-5, uh, Michael Zioli and Samantha Danubio, 41 Elmwood, block 2009, lot four. It was an application for a two-story addition in the rear and side yards pursuant to 270-37A. Um, there was a request to continue this to this uh, hearing today. However, this afternoon, we all received a letter from the applicants. Um, um, this is the architect, architect. The applicants' architect. Thank you. Uh, stating that they are uh, redesigning and that will eliminate any need that they had projected for variances. So the application is now withdrawn without prejudice. So this is closed out. That's correct. Closed out. Yep. Thank you. Yep. I want to make sure you use the right terms. Thank you. Okay, so the next application that we have is LUB 2023-10 for the Allendale Steakhouse slash Reed Properties LLC, 95 West Allendale, Lock 1809, Locks 3 and 4. And this is for converting the former bank into a restaurant pursuant to 147-7A, change of use. Indeed. Thank Good you. evening, board members. My name is Mark Medeo. My offices are located on Legion Drive in Bergenfield. Mr. Randazzo had a bit of a scheduling conflict. He may still come running through the door, but he asked that I make sure we at least got moving and certainly didn't keep anybody waiting. Mr. Medeo, just before I before you start, if you might just go over the uh, a jurisdictional issue, which is fine. Just on the notice, uh, two two matters. One, I just want to preface kind of what we're here for for the board, Thank you. Sure. and also uh, the the notice. Uh, the property address in the, on the tax map is 90 West Allendale Avenue. The notice has uh, 95 West Allendale Avenue. I don't think that's a fatal jurisdictional flaw, in my opinion. I'm just pointing it out for the record and and for the applicant. Uh, and uh, the reason why it's not to my a problem is that the uh, publication identifies the existing bank building. It also identifies the proper lot and block. Excellent. So I, I don't think it's a fatal issue unless you 
feel otherwise. Uh, I happen to agree with you because the street address is not even a required component of notice. Right. The statute specifically says you only need to notice to the block and lot. Right. Um, I just wanted so, to point that out. Thank uh, you. The other thing is just for the for the board here, since this is kind of a a bit of a not it's not a uh, variance application. It's not a site plan application. What we're here for really is a it's a a change of use, and it's not even an application. It's okay. it's really not anything. Well, it's something that is going to be approved or or not approved, but it will be approved. But they're not seeking variance relief. It's a chance for the board here to review the use coming in to make sure that everything that they are going to do is put on the record so that in the future, uh, when if any issues or engineering issues come up, uh, the record can reflect what was proposed and what was approved at that time. Because as you know, the restaurant use here is a permitted use. Mm -hmm. So it's not a use variance and it's not a site plan because it's a permitted use and everything, nothing is happening outside. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted the board to know that although uh, we're here as a formal application on proper notice, uh, there's really not too much to approve nor discretion that the board has in making any applications, but certainly questions are permitted as to, you know, operational uses and operations and uh, mechanisms of how the restaurant's sure. going to operate. So sure. just wanted to preface that before you started and now Excellent. go right Thank ahead. You, and, and excuse me one minute, Council. Anybody on the board, given what Mr. Bada just put out there, does anybody have any questions? Okay, good. Please, sir. All right. Thank so Thank to you. kind of bootstrap off that just a little bit, some towns have change of use, change of commercial use, yeah. change of commercial tenant. And it's for occasions like this. When you have, uh, I'm gonna date myself as far as reviewing ordinances, a permitted dress shop goes out and a re permitted restaurant comes in. And even though they're both permitted uses, and even though they both have the same downtown parking profile, which is often none, uh, the fact is, is you really do come before a board explain to them what you're doing, explain to them how you're going to manage those circumstances, and uh, hopefully productive questions will yield some good answers, and we can explain most of it to you. So we'd love to do that. I have the application or the 200-foot the notice list documents. Uh, what I'd like to do is pass those up if it's okay. Does that go to the secretary or council? I can go to the secretary. And okay. just uh, also bootstrapping kind of the, I have reviewed the affidavit of uh, publication, as I said, as well as the mailing requirements, and they are all in order. Thank you. Thank you. So what we are moving forward with this evening is that change of use application with regard to uh, 90 West Allendale Avenue, lots three and four, although I note from the engineer's letter, that that is often referred to simply as lot three, and that's probably by way of some consolidation or something else which took place years ago. The good news about this application and similar ones is you're all familiar with the property. Uh, we will have our architect testify, but I think it's fair to say it's about a hundred year old bank building. It's one of the hallmark sort of buildings of downtown. Um, and uh, it is being subjected at this point to what we would like to think is a adaptive reuse or conversion of it uh, and continued basic look of the same building. I think we've all seen things like this in Ridgewood and some other towns. And, and frankly, it's a nice way to go instead of, and in this case sounds completely in, inappropriate, demoing the building or doing something else. So you all have the advantage of really knowing the building, the area, and I think in this case, you all have the advantage of knowing my clients. Um, it's fair to say they may own one or two restaurants in town. I would imagine you've all eaten at some of them. So this, this change of use is interesting in the sense that the restaurant across the street is going here. That's it. So uh, it is fair to discuss some of the specifics of how it's done, but I think probably you've all mostly seen how it's done. It is not a change in what happens in your downtown. It is exactly the same 
formula moved across the street uh, and it continues, we hope to be a valuable occupant of downtown space here. So what I'd like to do first to give you some ideas is to have our project architect come up. Um, he'll explain some of those details and I think trash removal, loading and unloading, how things get delivered, all of those things. Um, and then we'll move to uh, my client and the operator of the premises because there may be other questions about that. So if that's all right with the chair, let's we can get going. Well, oh, come on up. I'm going to get a little bit out of your way. Okay. Name and address for the record and raise your right hand. Matthew Evans, architect planner, 470 Chamberlain F, Patterson, New Jersey. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth through the course of this application? Yes, I do. Okay, thank you. Matthew Evans, E-V-A-N-S. So, Mr. Evans, you're a licensed architect in the state of New Jersey? Yes. And how long have you been so licensed? Uh, since 1995. And in the last uh, 30 years or so, 25, 28 years, have you had an opportunity to appear before a couple of planning boards? Yes. Uh, have you appeared before this one? Um, or? I don't remember uh, appearing, but I've appeared in um, neighboring uh, municipalities uh, in Burton County. Um, and your license is in full force in effect as of today? Yes. Mr. Chairman, absent a good reason why he wouldn't be an expert? Accepted. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, Matthew, if you don't mind, in order to familiarize people a little bit more with the property, let's just talk briefly about the survey that's on the property or on your drawings. It's fair to say that the restaurant premises or the bank premises is located at the corner of West Allendale and Maple Street. Yes. And we've described that on the plan as lots three and four. However, if it's in fact simply lot three and that, that's fine with us, it doesn't change anything. Right, so <clears throat> that was taken from the uh, recent survey um, by uh, BMC, uh, dated 6-28-23. And it does mention lot four on it, but the meets and bounds or the perimeter would remain um, the same as what was uh, depicted on the plan. And what is the approximate square footage of or dimensions of the lot? Uh, basically, we have a uh, property that um, is roughly 35. Uh, it has averages uh, different um, along Maple Street is 136.61 and 150 um, on the left side from West Hollandale Avenue. There's an arch in the front, so uh, it's a little irregular on the front, um, and then it angles along the uh, middle of the parking lot in the back. That's all right. The dimensions will get us get us moving. And approximately, what is the size of the building on the building? Okay, so we have the building is an existing structure, um, and it's uh, about thirty. We have it is thirty um, thirty foot nine inch dive. So it's um, approximately 31, um, 31 feet by uh, 56, and it averages because it's on an angle, so it has a little different uh, layout. Okay. So, Council, excuse me for one quick minute. Just one. Are you getting off? Are you you're hearing everything? Mm -hmm. okay. okay, thank you. All right, so it's fair to say, or is it fair to say, that from the West Allendale Avenue frontage, the building goes pretty much in width, lot line to lot line, and it goes back approximately anywhere between 150 and 160 feet. And you just described the size of the actual building structure. And what is the balance of the lot? Okay, so the building's situated at the intersection of West Allendale and Maple. Uh, and we have um, the, the remainder in the rear would be <clears throat> the existing uh, access to the building. And then there's parking, handicap parking, and uh, a few spots that uh, basically traverse their lot and the other um, properties on the rear of the West Allendale uh, properties. Okay. So there's about six spaces in the back, including uh, a handicap space. Um, that's as big as the property is. That's what it's always been. Right. All right. 
So let's talk a little bit more about the operations inside the building. Do we have, uh, Mr. Chairman and Council, if I may, I'm going to call this whole SEC A1, my initials today, date, uh, but I'm sure your secretary is certainly keeping track of it. Um, and so let's talk a little bit. We, we looked at the front sheet mm -hmm. and talked a little bit about the existing condition and a little bit about the, uh, the lot itself. Is it, can we move to sheet number SK2 and talk a little bit about the proposed floor? Right. Okay, so SK2 shows um, the first um, floor plan is the first floor plan, the mezzanine floor plan, and then we have the uh, basement floor plan. Uh, uh, next to that. So basically what we're showing on this is uh, reconfiguring the interior of the uh, building to create um, a new uh, main stair that would go up to the mezzanine. We have a small vestibule uh, reception in the front and then we have seating throughout the, the front of the building. Uh, in the middle uh, we have two handicapped bathrooms then there's all the um, kitchen and associated uh, service areas uh, to the rear. So is that mezzanine presently exist or are we building that into the space? Well, the bank had a mezzanine um, and it basically was situated to the rear of the, um, of the building and the interior. And so what we've done is um, we're gonna um, remove that and reconfigure it and, and do a new mezzanine based on the occupancy for uh, this um, use. Okay. And uh, is it on the first floor also contains, of course, the kitchen area and kitchen facility? Yes. And if you had to break out the first floor, is it approximately 50-50 between kitchen area and bath, kitchen and bath, and then see? Yeah, so it could, you could approximate it as 50-50. So this, the bathrooms and kitchen would be the rear and the and the seating in the front. Oh, and there's two stairwell stairways, if I'm reading the plan correctly. One in the front is off of the reception vestibule, which I take it is for customers, and one in the back, which appears to be more like the kitchen staff and the Right. So it's it's also uh, we have the front stair, which is the main stair for the um, for the uh, clients, and then we have uh, the rear. Uh, stair, which would be also as a second means of egress for the, the mezzanine. And then we have the existing stair to the basement, which is beyond that. Okay. And that's all in the back. Yes. And while we're talking about uh, second means of egress and some technical stuff, do we comply with fire code, uh, building code, handicap requirements, all of those things that we take into consideration when we design our site? Yes, so we had, um, if you look at the plan, it says egress plan, but that was from originally, um, uh, from the original construction drawings. Uh, so we've taken into account uh, the uh, the fire protection, egress, and um, exiting for the, the uh, safety purposes. Excellent. And how many seats in, in your plan and table layout, how many seats are, are, are placed on the first floor line? So uh, we have a little table on our uh, floor plan. First floor is 42 seats. And then the second floor mezzanine is 70 seats. So we have a total of 112 seats. And obviously in the engineer's review letter, he's taken into consideration the ordinance requirement for parking. Mm -hmm. But I assume like a lot, a lot of other restaurants downtown or businesses downtown, quite frankly, we only have the six parking spaces. Right. Okay. And if you have that engineer's review letter, could you indicate to the board how many spaces per code is required? Move that on page. Yeah. So uh, <clears throat> we have, I believe, it's three point two, and under the zoning for off street parking requirements, <clears throat> the uh, code does not explicitly list a restaurant requirement. Parking requirement could be interpreted from other similar use, public assembly with seats, for which one space per three seats plus one space per two resident employees 
and one space for non-resident employees required. So um, utilizing that this requirement, the proposed 112 seats would correspond to 38 parking spaces. Um, and that's basically um, what would be required based on interpretation of code. Yeah. And we have the same six or so that the buildings are. Yes. Okay. And let's talk a little bit about the basement plan that you've also included. Um, that plan includes, I assume, some storage, uh, no tables, nothing else, storage, perhaps a mechanical room, um, walk-in box, anything else in the basement? Uh, basically taking the basement uh, and reconfiguring it for um, the restaurant use. Um, the storage was basically, it used to be um, a space below the safe above, which would, has been removed. So that's um, basically all concrete, I believe, around that. And uh, they're going to be using that as a storage and a walk-in box. And then we have a, a mop sinks and then a mechanical room mm -hmm. <clears throat> would all be reconfigured to a new mechanicals uh, for the proposed use. Is the building sprinkler? Uh, not presently. Is it, will it be sprinkler? Uh, I'm, I'm, we're still looking at that, but if it's required, we would definitely uh, provide sprinklers for the uh, use. So let's, let's go back if we can. And while we're talking about the floors, let's go back now to the front sheet. And perhaps you can give a little bit of information as far as uh, solid waste container, anything like that, or is any of that on or proposed in your plans um there's none on the plan i guess the um the owner could um clarify some of those conditions because sure. they have being that they have the adjacent uh restaurant they're going to work out um the, the refuse and recycling with that system that they already have in place well why don't why don't we just make that clear right. the immediately adjacent restaurant on west allendale avenue is also owned or operated by the app yes correct? Okay, so for the board members who didn't already know that, um, that is in fact. Are there, uh, if we can, to page three just for a moment, is that an accurate representation of the elevations of the property, which looks remarkably like exactly what's there now? Yeah, so we um, basically what we want to do is keep that, um, the, the existing look of the facade. Um, uh, especially on the um, West Allendale and Maple Street side. So you can see we've highlighted those elevations with the brick and um, basically keeping those existing openings for the um, main entry and the windows and working with those um, arch windows on the side elevation. Uh, we're also proposing um, an, a fire exit door. Um, so that would be the only real uh, change in that. So we're basically going to uh, take the sill out and lower it to uh, accommodate a, an exit door. Okay. So on the existing right elevation, the only significant change to the look of those three arched windows is the arched window nearest the rear parking lot is in fact going to keep the same shape and appearance, but it will become an additional means of egress. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Um, board members, I have no further questions of this witness, but of course, oh, we would always welcome to you. Okay. Um, I just want to go back and revisit the sprinklers. Okay. But maybe you're ready, maybe we'll, we'll talk about that as you go through your letter. Uh, no, if you want to talk about or, it. Or, or, well, does any, let, let me just say, does board members have any questions right now before Michael goes through? I, I do. Please. So, couple of things. Uh, you mentioned that they currently operate the adjacent restaurant. And although the refuse sounds like it's it's going to be harmonious and work out because they operate it, what happens when ownership changes? Well, let's, um, maybe we'll first get the operator up here. Let me I'm make sure. I'm just because it works now. But Understood. then the restaurant does great. Somebody comes by with a big checkbook, takes over, and then the garbage situation could immediately change. Right. I totally agree. I understand. Let's have the uh, the okay. operator come up and thank you for getting the question out there. So I has a minute to consider. And then I do have another question for Mr. Evans. 
Um, I love the fact that there's another stair for means of egress. Has there been any consideration to perhaps install a, a uh, stair lift so that if there is a party upstairs, somebody in a wheelchair can access it? Um, we've considered it um, the, based on the seating and, and the occupancy of the um, second floor mezzanine. It's not required by code. Um, we had, you know, a lot of difficulty, like basically uh, the the building itself, as you can see, is is you know is limited to um, the restaurant and a, a lot of the um, the kitchen is in the rear. Uh, so um, we had looked at different options, but um, and as far as the code was concerned, it wasn't. Uh, it's not a code issue. I'm just asking because if you know the upstairs seems like a great spot to have a an affair, and uh, it could be someone in a wheelchair, a, an elderly person that's trying to get upstairs. Mm -hmm. You know, I know the cost of an elevator might be uh, a little a little much, but I think the stair lifts are economically doable. And I just can I would say I'd like to see you consider it. Well, we'll, we'll definitely consider just, just so that um, someone in a wheelchair could access absolutely. the second floor. Um, certainly, we would consider it. I don't think we're in a position right now to promise it or deny it. Um, but yes, it, of course, it's something worth considering. Yeah. That's it for now. And uh, just while we have you, I am looking at the engineer's letter. A couple of things that do jump out. Um, let, let's do a few. I hate I hate to steal the engineer's thunder here, but we might as well talk about the few that maybe you can help you with. Let four point six building finishes, colors, and materials. What are our thoughts about? So basically, we call out the existing, it's basically an existing brick. Um, we basically power washing and re repointing the mortar to match the existing mortar on the um, facade. And then uh, the windows would be renovated uh, throughout with um, similar windows. And um, so we would keep that architectural feel of the building. So there's no change other than power washing and cleaning. There's no change in the finishes, colors, or materials. Right. So there's not we're not stuccoing or changing any of the um, existing architectural features. So one of the things we like is how it looks. Yes. Okay. We assume the board says that as well. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, HVAC units, generators, exterior mechanical. Where are the HVA HVAC units for product? Well, previously when it was a bank, there was one large unit on the roof in the middle. Uh, we're proposing to um, basically replace that unit so it'd be a rooftop unit. And there is a large parapet around the um, existing roof, so that would be screened so it would not be visible from the street. I, I guess if you go by or if you uh, remember the old um, bank, you really didn't have any uh, visual impact on the uh, streetscape. So just like now, unit will be on the roof and you more than likely won't see it just as you don't see the front. Right. Okay. Uh, it's, uh, existing sewer service should be TV inspected. Excuse, council, excuse me for one second, please. Yep. Generator. Oh, do we Apart, suppose please. a generator? Uh, I don't believe there's a generator. We didn't propose okay. one. Yeah. Like yeah. a backup generator? Yeah. No. We can ask, but as far as we know, no. okay. not to say it wouldn't happen, in compliance with law, but okay. Already, but again, all the mechanical equipment upstairs. The, well, and and in the basement. And in the basement. Yes. 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 Existing sewer service should be TV. Obviously, grease trap. Um, I assume you have a wastewater management person in town designated under municipal statute, and of course, we need to do all of those things. It seems, it seems it's required by code, quite frankly. Uh, sewer adjustment fees associated with the change of use, of course, if we're using a building in a different way, we expect to pay whatever the fees are. Uh, coordinate water service required for the change of use with Viola. Is there any special or unique water service issues here, or uh, is that simply making sure we have the volume and the pressure required to operate? Right, so that would be... Um that would be um, sufficient for the restaurant. Uh, also, um, we would have 
everything to comply with the health department. We would have the grease traps, the three compartment sink, the hand sinks, all that mop sinks would be all included as part of the um, kitchen and um, the bathrooms facilities. And just finally, 4.2, the egress door on Maple Street that we just talked about, the new one, um, testimony should confirm the door provides an accessible route without the need for a ramp. Uh, that is important. Obviously, we can't be building things in the municipal right of way. Does that, in fact, work without the need for a ramp? Yes, um, it works. Uh, we have the elevation showing uh, the L floor, finished floor elevation and the door. So basically, as you may know, it's very flat area over there and um, it would not need any type of ramping um, to uh, accommodate the exit. In other words, the floor of the building is pretty much even with the floor, yes. or with the sidewalk. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Again, nothing further from my end, but of course, we're here. Uh, yeah. Okay. Michael, please. Yeah, sure. Uh, I mean, I think a lot of the questions that I raised and my memo have been addressed. Um, you know, uh, with regard to the, the sprinklers, I, that's probably a code requirement. I don't know if it's something uh, that that is necessary or not. I, I would think it's probably required for a restaurant at a certain size, but I don't I don't know what the building code requirements are. Mm -hmm. And and certainly if there's going to be the need for sprinkler systems, there may be the requirement for a second uh, water connection and that's part of the reason why I pointed out that whatever service is necessary will need to be coordinated with DOE because the borough no longer owns the water system, it's owned by DOE. Right. Um, I, I don't know, uh, I didn't see anything on the plan, I didn't mention in my report, Is it? but is there any signage proposed for the restaurant? Um, uh, yes, but we don't yet have all of that design work. So I think at this point, unless there is signage drawing, um, which I don't believe we have, um, we would not be seeking any relief as regards signage until we know exactly what that would be. So at, the, at this point, your your intention is to propose conformance. Conform yeah, comply with, comply with the borough. Correct. Well, we haven't we haven't noticed for anything different. We haven't submitted any anything different. And so uh, hopefully we'll just stick with that. If not, we'll visit again and have you look at our proposals. And then um, if we can maybe hear a little bit about uh, any exterior lighting that may be or may not be proposed on the building. Thank you. Okay. Um, we show on the elevation, we do show the existing street lighting. Um, we have existing building lighting that would remain, um, maybe uh, refit out but basically being on um, Allendale at West Allendale Avenue and Maple um, it's it's basically in the public right away we don't want any um, we don't want to create any lights that would create any uh, visual pollution um, you know uh, for that those areas so we didn't propose anything um, on those elevations do we need a light over the door on West Maple the new door that, that ingress door we were just talking about. Is that commonplace to have a light over that so a person stepping out sees where they're stepping? Um, I mean, we could provide one. Um, there'll be emergency exit lighting uh, throughout the interior and um, for the rear exit also. So I believe that would comply. But if we do need to add a light, it would be basically you know, similar to the lights that we show on the front elevation, something that would complement the building. Okay. And uh, is it possible also that there might be some accent lighting on the front? You know, you're showing the two light, uh, the actual wall packs, I guess, or wall lighting. I'm assuming those will be decorative, fit in with the building and fit to the, the look. Um, and, and without the need for variances or approvals, uh, is it possible there could be an accent light on the columns or an accent light into the eaves or any number of other small lighting features? We didn't propose anything. We want to keep it basically true to what, you know, what is there now. And um, if they were to um, add anything, 
and then we have to review it if we uh, have a need to come up. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, and Michael. Yeah, and for the board's, um, I guess, information, um, you know, we cited the uh, couple sections of the code that talked about off street parking and what the requirements are. And there's a general paragraph in the code that says, you know, parking is supposed to be provided for a number of uses and specifically calls out restaurants. But further in the code where there's the parking calculation requirements, there isn't one for restaurants. So what we tried to do is provide some information to the board on, you know, if, if you were to look at the parking demand based on what we have in the code that could be considered similar, the parking demand could be something of the order of magnitude of, of 30 and, it, and that's really for informational purposes, you know, for the board is not really um, a requirement that is clearly stated in in the code uh, for restaurants. Uh, and, you know, I believe, uh, I don't know if they have any shared parking arrangements on the property, um, but, you know, we do have um, a commuter lot in, in the downtown area that uh, is used uh, with transit. And I would imagine that, you know, the prime time for that to be utilized probably doesn't coincide with the prime time that the patrons will be coming to the restaurant. Yeah, I'd actually like to address that as well. So we do have our transit lot, and it's pretty much known to our community as a transit lot. And a lot of people don't even know that we have municipal parking there. There's really no signage, and there's no signage that shows that it's actually free municipal parking. So Something that I've been working on with the Public Safety Committee and the Chief of Police is to get proper signage. So we're actually going to purchase a big sign that's going to be adjacent to um, the South Thomas building. That building is called the, the Flatiron Building. So it's very visible because there is one small sign there now that says there's, you know, 34 commuter space, uh, I'm sorry, shopping spaces. You, you honestly, you can't even see, you can't even read it. And there's not even very good. The delineation is. There, right, there's no striping at all too. Mm -hmm. So we are going to address that. Um, currently there's about 135 spaces there. And honestly, they're just not used. So we plan mm -hmm. on having that more visible to uh, all residents. So they know that there is first of all parking there. And then second of all, that after a certain time that it will be free parking. Um, currently our meter parking, I think goes to six, but we're going to revisit that as well and have that for the greater good of all of like downtown, for example. So six meter, meter parking seems a little bit too late. I think we might even reduce that to, to four. And that has been some of the other discussions that we have had. Well, thank you, Mel. You're welcome. Thank you. So then that helps with the concern is in our letter. Yeah, yeah, and, and again, uh, I don't know if, it, if it's so much a, a concern other than more like of an informational point to advise the board that, you know, the code does contemplate um, a need to provide parking, but doesn't have any requirements to calculate the parking for a restaurant. And, uh, you know, if we were to use something similar to a restaurant, you know, we could be looking at a need of 30 or 40. All right, thank you. Michael, any, any, any anything else on there that you would like to say? No, I don't think I have anything on this address uh, at this point. Okay, thank you. Um, I'd like to have the owner up to talk about operations. Just oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, board members, any questions of this witness? Okay. Uh, opening up to the public. Excuse me. Of course, we're uh, sorry. About comments from the public. Um, I actually yourself. do have a quick, quick question on the, on the sign. And you talked about it briefly, but do you know where it's going to be on the building? Is there any? Uh, it would probably be through the door on top of the front entrance. Mm -hmm. It's going to be bolted in to the right instead of having it on in coming out. Okay. So it's going to be with the metal. Okay. Okay. All right. If there's no further questions for this witness, then uh, we can move on. Excellent. Right. Thank you. Thank Mr. you. Chairman. Thank and you. So as long as we had our so. witness speaking, we might as well let him come up. He's ever okay. going to discuss operations right. a little bit. So thank you. Good evening, everyone. Hi. So if you wouldn't mind, set forth your name. You can scoot just a little closer that way, and we'll both be able to share. And if you state your name clearly and spell your last name for the record. 
My name is Ronnie, last name uh, spelled Vaseli, V as in Victor, E-S-E-L-I. My father and my uncle, Eddie and Adi. You are, just raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth through the course of this application? I do. Very good. Thank you. And just briefly, you mentioned the signage, just you're now under oath and everything you said a few moments ago about the signage. Yes. Okay. And what is your position with the applicant then? Family, family, family owners of the family business. Correct. Okay. And let's work with you to discuss some of the operations issues. So obviously one of those is trash. Yes. How is the facility going to handle trash, uh, storage, screening, pickup, et cetera? So as far as the storage goes, we already discussed that with the architect, the storage is going to go in the basement. As far as the trash, uh, right now, we're, our goal is to use the same trash as Mezzaluna does. It's fenced in, just get a bigger dumpster to accommodate both of the businesses that's going to be there for, for it to be. And um, the scheduling as far as the waste, the waste management, they'll be come two, three times a week to pick up the trash. And they come when you ask them to be. You pay for it, they'll show up anytime you want. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, the board member, uh, Mr. Trino, raised a, a good question, which was, what happens if, for some reason, your family sells the adjoining asset? That's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> We've been here for 20 years. You're, you're under oath, by the way. <laughs> yes. We've been here for 20 years, and we're planning me to retire there as well, too. So, you know, that's not going to happen anytime soon. Well, that, stranger things have happened. I, I agree, but it's satisfied. family, you know. Yeah. All right, let's let's see if we can figure it out. It so might not be that one; it could be this one. I mean, we have to we need to know what's going to happen. Yeah. Well, so, it it I, we can address that too. It's not a problem. Even the landlord of the building that where Ms. Luna is currently right now touched the world. Tom, you know, we see him quite often, and he's the one actually who proposed the idea because we share it uh, with the rest of the uh, tenants, uh, the apartments, and the salon. So it's one joint mission there. So it's not like, I know it's my word against Tom's. It's everybody agreed to it. And let's but, do it but, this way. All right, go ahead. Go I, ahead. I think go perhaps ahead. a better option to give you a, a level of confidence is that in the event that Mezzaluna is sold or this rest or this property is sold, the applicant will have to comply with the dog with the solid waste or garbage enclosure process independently for this property. Now we either can do that through the building department, pursuing the code, or if it's the board's position that at that point we have to come back here, and I hope most of us are retired by then, um, we'll do that. That seems a very reasonable condition. How, how large is that existing that where the where the where it currently sits right now? How large is it? Yeah, the, there are six. I'm just I'm familiar with it because I operated a Chestnut Street dumpster pad, which has probably five restaurants, 25 apartments, and adjoining properties. And as the use intensified, even though waste management came three, four days a week, twice a day, separate cardboard, yada yada yada, it became a disaster. Um, and I'm not saying it's going to happen here. But I know what those residents went through, and I just don't want to see that happen. So right now, there's two dumpsters there. One is for recycling, and one's for the garbage. Okay. I would say each one of them is about six, seven feet wide, maybe eight they're, feet they're wide. Eight yarders, six so yarders, eight yarders. Eight yarders. Yeah. Okay. So there's two of them, eight yarders. So is that now granted? You know, I know you guys operate across the street, so you have a sense of how much garbage you're going to generate. Yes generating the same amount of garbage or hopefully more because this is probably bigger and um right so right how now, is that going to affect that right or? now they come twice a week to pick up the garbage mondays and fridays if it's more then we have we can add an extra day they can come wednesdays and pick them up so i i asked how large the area was is there enough space to add a third yes there is. Yard bumps yes there is within the enclosure yes And access to that garbage has never been to that area has never been an issue. No. 
And again, if for some reason, by sale of either property, landlord being capricious and anything, in the event we no longer had dumpster space or access to a dumpster, we would probably have to come back and explain to you how it is. And, and again, I'm not anxious to eliminate a parking space, but frankly, we have about six on 38. If we had five on 38, but we had much better solid waste facilities, I, I think that's an argument we could present to the board fairly. Mm -hmm. A resolution? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, so that takes care of solid waste. Now, you mentioned garbage being retained in the building. That's not long term retention, that's until it goes out to the dumpster. Correct. Sure. Okay. And uh, let's talk very briefly, if we can, about suppliers. How many trucks a day? What time do they come in? Uh, I assume you have meat, vegetables, fish, dry goods, like every other restaurant. Correct. Um, meat delivery comes twice a week. And fish we get it daily but they come in and out quick and basically we have the dairy guy the vegetables and dairy so it's just three trucks uh, to, between the dairy vegetables and the fish mostly you'll see it's two trucks in the morning they come in 10 30 11 o'clock and they're out in half an hour at most and are you feeding customers at 10 30 11 o'clock no morning? no we're not okay and where so those could those trucks pull into the yes, presumably they can. empty parking lot at that point yes they can um do we currently at your current place or at Magdalena, do you load and unload from allendale avenue no it's not only parking lot they come in oh. pull up so uh, i assume uh, living here you would know if you've seen the valve door truck loading or unloading from Allendale Avenue. Mm -hmm. I trust that that has never been an issue and the testimony reflects the fact that it won't be. Mr. Chairman, as director of operations, my guys are in front of PPW. It's never, never been an issue with the existing restaurant. I don't see it being a problem with the new location. Thank you for that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's never been an issue. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Are there any other, are we, do we plan valet parking for it now? In the future, yes. Is that a possibility? Yes, it is. Okay. And where would the vehicle park? So, if we would get a valet company, it's going to be between Mezzalina and the steakhouse, so they can use most of the spaces that's behind the building currently, Mezzalina's, and whatever the proposed steakhouse, um, and the municipal lot. So, so this there are way, options for parking. Correct. So this way, the customer doesn't have to walk back and forth. We just have the valet the oh. services do that. Oh. Are there any other? Uh, we don't. We don't plan the installation of an elevator. We will consider a stair lift if that makes sense. But of course, it's not a It's not a requirement. So I can't certainly can't promise it. And uh, sprinkling, if it's required by code. We'll have to do it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mr. Chairman, I have no other questions. Um well thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Just just a quick thing, you just you just mentioned the valet. I'm I know the area in my mind. Valet have people the you know, Allendale Avenue is pretty busy. It is. Or could be busy. It is. So, so we had the valet services at the steakhouse up until COVID. And once COVID hit, everybody got scared and we stopped it. Okay. So, but I also know that there's a little, you know, you have that little area in the front that you're sort of kind of knowing off the side. Um, in the front of that building, you know, there's 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 the driveway. No, that, that's locked. That but that's locked. Yes. Okay. I'm just trying, in my mind, I'm just, I know I'm not saying mean, no. Don't get me wrong. The I'm parking lot concerned. is, and there's a fence, but that fence has been locked. Okay. Um, but wait, so no, the valley services pull up and they used to drive around the block and park in the back by the municipal park. Okay. So okay. I'm just concerned that if you know people are pulling up to the front of the building, you know, last thing it'd be great for you guys, don't get me wrong. Great. But the, it's an option, you know. Like, we always think about, you know, what we can do to satisfy everybody, you know, it's not just mm -hmm. for our need, it's for everybody's need. Okay. 
Okay, that's fair. Or use the ballet with setup on I've, the side. On the side is so where I'm thinking. On the maple on the maple on the maple side. Would be yeah. more yeah. Yeah. Which right. is where I would do. Okay. And, and of course if we put it if we if we did it and we put it somewhere that the town didn't like, I'm assuming we'd get an knock on the door and we can we'll figure it out. Yeah. And, <clears> and we <throat> have with now several of Okay. Okay. Um the only the, the only the only other thing that I see, and again, I'm not an expert in this, and I have to divert. I guess the fire code and Michael, I'm pointing to you, the sprinklers. But I I I'm I, I'm in no position to be able to. Yeah. I, again, I I don't know expert. I don't okay. know what the building code would require. I mean, I I know Anthony would know, and okay. I'm sure you know whenever he gets the the application, if it gets approved, you know he'll take a look at it. We did have. And I did have some conversations um, about this extra egress door and, and the extra stairs, and, and they are all being proposed to address uh, safety requirements based on the occupancy load. Okay. So we, we already started, or they, the applicants already started working toward trying to resolve potential issues uh, from the construction code standpoint. Okay. And you're willing to work with the construction code officials? Absolutely. Okay. If it's including sprinklers as well, well if that's required. Uh, if it's required. It this way. If it's required, there's nothing we could say or you could say that would allow it of not course. to happen. Of course. So um, if it's required, we absolutely have to do it. Okay. It's an easy, it's an easy decision. Okay. Um, if it's not required, we likely would not do it. For all the reasons that you don't do it. Even if it's not required, we're still going to take the measures to make sure it's fire prevented or double sheet drug or whatever needs to be okay. you know done just like we did at Mesa Luna upstairs where they didn't require us to put sprinklers only in the basement and we took the extra precautions with the double sheet rock fire rated mm -hmm. whatever he's the architect whatever you know the town says will do so it's not up to us it's up to you. Mr. Chairman again please fortunately unfortunately we did have the fire at Mesa Luna mm -hmm. the second we had a fire, mezzanine, mm -hmm. and the day, like, right, I think you actually got your neck. Um, and the second means of egress in the back, uh, that's actually the fireman, the duct work of the AC system, and the second means of egress work, fire, and the construction at mezzanine was, was sufficient to where the fire could have been a lot worse, and because of the way they built it, it was, it was minimal, and they got, I'll say it's minimal, but of course, you guys to reopen probably wasn't, but uh, it was fine. Uh, they, again, we all know the applicants made. They, yep. they do good they do good stuff so okay all right so i i have no further questions of course the board or public mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i'll open up uh michael as long, are you, can i do the board now okay yep. board members please questions of this witness actually i have a question just curious the old allendale steakhouse are you what are you going to be you're keeping well, that <laughs> we're planning to do a breakfast and lunch that's our goal, so we'll see how everything goes out. Okay. And if we do open up a breakfast and lunch, we can also use the parking space in the evening there too. So that's another plus. So the thinking would be, just just kind of twisting what you just said, that would not be used at night while the steakhouse, right. theoretically, while the steakhouse is open. Right. Then you so breakfast and lunch would be open from seven to three. Okay. And then evening hours for dinner. <laughs> So the steakhouse proposed hours are only dinner. Yeah. For 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 now, yes. Okay. 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 We're, we're not locking in. No, no, no. Of course, I think you know they'll be doing something. <laughs> it's not it's not gonna sit empty very long. And most likely it'll be a Okay. Please. And sleeping when will you be sleeping? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know when we're married, to be honest with you. We barely see our wife and kids. But it's a good thing. Keeps us busy and out of trouble. That was that was, you know, again, I just had that. Discuss the solid weight situation. We discussed the basement spaces we talked about. Mayor, thank you for the information on the parking. Um, I, I guess I, I I have one question, please. Um, and that maybe Ron has some of the answer to it. The, the street scheme. Um, does that continually along the funds? I'm trying to think about. I, 
definitely goes right down the side of maple. I don't remember where it doesn't. It goes down somewhere on the side, but it goes all the way down. So I mean, that put, may be a nice thing. We're, we're, we are going to be doing phase five and six of the downstate streetscape project. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'll stop and I'll see you guys and let you know who the contractor is. And you probably want to just be rough. You, you, you're doing this nice job. You want to continue the, the pavers sufficiently down to a point where it's Absolutely. aesthetically nice for you guys. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Board members, any uh, any other questions? Okay. I'll open it up to the public on this witness. Okay. Seeing none, I bring it back to the board. Just any. No, I think the um, you know if there are no other questions or anything like that, it's really a, just a um, a motion to approve the change of use. That's the only uh, mm -hmm. uh, thing that is in front of the board. Um, that's it. We have all the testimony against the letter. I believe the okay. uh, engineering testimony has been complied with. You know, has been presented. Uh, certainly the. Uh, applicant has indicated that they would comply with the technical review comments from uh, Mr. Breland, so we'll add that into a resolution if it's proposed. Uh, and no other conditions on the use other than comply with all the laws, be a good neighbor like they have been. Exactly. All right. Motion to uh, a motion to approve the change of use. All right. So moved. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Second, please. Second. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thanks, Joe. Sorry, Dennis. Yes. Board member Petrino. Yes. Board member Dukeman. Good pleasure, definitely. Yes. Board member Dallo. Yes. Chairman Sirico. Again, what Mr. Kistner said, with pleasure. Yes. Mayor Wisinski. Yes. Mr. Nicholzella. Yes. Okay. Board member, thank you for your thank you. Thank, uh, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck to you guys. guys. Have a good night. We'll get some sleep before the whole thing. No, thank you. Thank you very much. Good luck, guys. Okay. So next on our agenda is general, any comments from the public? I guess not. Seeing none, we'll bring it back to the board. Um, any other points of discussion? Traditionally, Mayor, Mr. Kistner, anything you'd like to comment, discuss, bring up? Um, I don't think so. I mean, I think it's, um, are you talking about this or just in general? General. Oh, in general. Uh, sure, we actually do have some news. We have a contractor that's going to be building the community center. Um, the contractor that is building the 70 units is the lowest responsible bidder who uh, received the award for the community center. Um, his name is uh, Donald Danello, and he's actually from town, UCC Construction. He actually wasn't technically the lowest bidder, but the one below him had what they call a fatal flaw. He had a certificate that was expired, and the lawyers determined that it had to be um, dismissed. So the fact that um, Danelle is actually working on the project now, the 70 units, I think is a good thing. And he's done a great job there and he's done it very, very quickly. Um, and that was one of the other things that just worked out that he, he said in his bid that he would have it done in six months. Um, and all the, a lot of the other ones were up for a year. So I'm excited to get it, to get it going. So um, the unit should be rented in January. And he plans on starting in the next like month or so. So there's going to be some coordination between between trying to get the people in to see see the new units. But um, it should be great. Um, really looking forward to it. Yes, That's looking, the big news in Allendale. It's looking nice. It's looking better. I go, yeah, down, I go down there. I go down there two three times a week. It's looking. I can't wait to get to pay the street. Yeah. That I can't wait for. Well, they're doing it now. So <laughs> yeah. Or them to pay, I should say. Uh, yep, on the end. So, yep, that's the latest. Okay, not to prolong the meeting. Anything else, Mr. Kistner? Yeah. Okay, board members, any comments? Anything else that we need to discuss? Okay, once again, I um thank you for your time tonight. I try to keep it under an hour. I blew it by five minutes. But um, that's next time. All right.
Could I have a motion for adjournment, motion. please? Thank you. Second. Thank you. Oh, right, and just, the next meeting, go ahead. Yeah, just wondering when the next meeting was. The 15th, 13th, or um, we'll see what comes in, right? We'll see what comes in. But right now, we'll... What's the thing in right now? Really? We should have something coming in, but I don't have anything in there. November, November 15th will be different, I think. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be in Atlantic City for the. Uh, oh, that's the, the uh, municipal. Yeah. Yeah. The League of Municipal. So there maybe, maybe um, we might want to reschedule the while they consider using the 13th as the primary date. Board members, are we accepting of that? Um, I'm actually not here either today, but that's okay. All right. So if anything comes in, it should. Linda, if we can target for the Monday, yeah, Monday the thirteenth, please. Okay. All right. Um. Linda, I guess we had we had the motion for adjournment, so just want to do a voice vote or whatever. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. All right, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Good. Appreciate it, and right. we will see you next month, hopefully.